Welcome to Lesson 7b, Similarity, Models, and Prototypes. In this lesson, we discuss the purposes of dimensional analysis. We'll define similarity and how we apply it between models and prototypes. And we'll do an example problem. What are the purposes of dimensional analysis? First, to help plan and carry out experiments to obtain scaling laws. For example, we can design a larger pump based on an existing small pump and predict how it will behave to sometimes predict trends. I say sometimes because as we'll see, this does not always happen. For example, you might be able to predict that power is proportional to diameter cubed through this process of dimensional analysis. Now I want to talk about similarity. Let's consider a model and a prototype. A prototype is the real item. For example, an actual car or an airplane or a submarine, whereas a model is a scale item. For example, a model car used for testing properly scale from model to prototype, we must have complete similarity, which we'll also call dynamic similarity. There are three criteria for similarity. First, we must have geometric similarity between the model and the prototype. For example, here the model is smaller than the prototype, but they're the same geometry. Note that a model doesn't have to be smaller than the prototype. It can actually be bigger. I tested golf balls one time in a wind tunnel, and I used golf balls that were about the size of a baseball. But the more usual case is that the model is smaller than the prototype. Geometric similarity implies proportional geometry. In other words, they're the same geometry, just different sizes. Second is kinematic similarity, which means we have proportional velocity fields. Here the speed approaching the model is proportional to the speed approaching the prototype and other speeds around the models, such as around the windshield here, are also proportional. If this is one and a half times this, this will be one and a half times this. Third, there's dynamic similarity, which means proportional forces. For example, the drag force on the whole car, or the model, FM, divided by the force on one of the wheels, for example, would have to have the same proportion for the prototype, as I sketch here. We must have all three of these, geometric, kinematic, and dynamic similarity, to achieve complete similarity. If so, we can confidently scale up or down from model to prototype. In general, we'll write a functional relationship between various pi's where we recall that pi is a non-dimensional parameter. What I mean is pi 1 is a function of pi 2, pi 3, etc. up to pi k, where k is the number of pi's in the problem. Pi 1 is always the dependent pi, while the other pi's are the independent pi's. Here's what we mean by similarity between a model and a prototype. If pi 2 of the model equal pi 2 of the prototype, and pi 3 of the model equal pi 3 of the prototype, etc. for all of the independent pi's, then we can be assured that pi 1 of the model equal pi 1 of the prototype. In other words, if all of the independent pi's match between model and prototype, then so does the dependent pi. Keep in mind that this is true only if all the independent pi's match, since this makes up our if-then statement. In other words, we have complete similarity. I should mention that of these three types of similarity, you can't have kinematic similarity without first having geometric similarity, and you can't have dynamic similarity without having kinematic similarity. That's why we say that dynamic similarity is complete similarity. Now let's do an example problem. Engineers need to predict the vibration frequency of electrical cables. These cables are the prototype, and here are their values. We have air at 25 degrees C, we have the wire diameter and the wind speed. I'll put subscripts P for the prototype. At 25 degrees C, we write the density and viscosity of the air. We'll call this diameter DP and this wind speed VP. There are many named dimensionless parameters, which we'll talk about in the next lesson. One of them is Struhl number, and it turns out that in this kind of a problem, Struhl number is a function of Reynolds number. So the engineers set up a model test in a water tunnel using a different cable. They make sure they have the same aspect ratio and end conditions, so they get similar vibration. And here are the model values. Water is at 20 degrees C, so rho m is 998.0 kilogram per meter cubed, and mu of the model is also known from tables. And we call this diameter dm. Subscript m, of course, means model. So let's calculate the water tunnel speed required to achieve dynamic similarity. We know that Struhl number is a function of Reynolds number, so this means pi 1 is a function of pi 2. There are only two pi's in this problem, a dependent one pi 1 and an independent one pi 2. 
Well, as we said above with our if-then statement, if all the independent pies match between model and prototype, here there's only one, then the dependent pies will also match. For dynamic similarity, we set the two Reynolds numbers the same, which means the Reynolds number of the model must match the Reynolds number of the prototype. We can solve this equation for Vm. Vm equal Vp times, now here it's good to use ratios of common variables, rho p over rho m, dp over dm, and mu m over mu p. This one's different than the other two since mu is in the denominator when you do the algebra. Now we plug in our values, vp, rho p over rho m, dp over dm, and mu m over mu p. My calculator gives 0 0.73875 meters per second. I comment why we wrote these as ratios. It's because you can immediately see that the dimensions all cancel numerator and denominator. We did not even have to convert diameters from centimeter to meter, as long as both are in the same units. So we need to run the water tunnel at 0 0.739 meters per second to achieve dynamic similarity between the model and the prototype. Part B says that when the water tunnel is run at the speed calculated in part A, this speed, the vibration frequency of the model cable is 38.1 hertz. We want to predict the vibration frequency of the prototype, also in hertz. Since REM equal REP, we have dynamic stability. We know that STM equal STP. We look up what Struhl number is. For a problem like this, Struhl number is FD over V. So equating model and prototype, we write FM DM over VM equal FP DP over VP. We know everything here now except FP. Again, using ratios, FP equal FM times DM over DP times VP over VM. Again, we plug in all the numbers where FM was measured as 38.1 hertz. And I'm not going to write out the diameter or speed ratios. I'll just give you the final result. The three digits, FP is 127 hertz. So you see that we're able to predict the frequency of vibration of the actual cable by performing a model test, which is one of the most practical uses for dimensional analysis. By the way, you may have heard wires making tones in the wind. People say they're singing in the wind. These are called aeolian tones, and they're due to vortex shedding on these cables. Here we're able to predict the frequency. You may have noticed that we tested in water, whereas our prototype was in air. I just want to mention this briefly. As long as there is dynamic similarity between model and prototype, the fluid used for the test does not matter. Here are some examples. Here's a fighter jet being tested in a water tunnel, which enables us to use dye streaks. Here's a car being tested in a water tunnel with fluorescent dye, visualizing the turbulent wake. And here's the opposite case, a submarine model being tested in a wind tunnel. As long as there are no significant surface effects, for example, ship waves on the surface of the ocean, you can use any fluid you want for the model test. Since we're modeling this submarine down deep in the ocean, there are no surface effects to worry about. As long as we achieve dynamic similarity, typically with the Reynolds number, sometimes with other non-dimensional parameters, we can measure forces and moments and other things on this model and scale up to the prototype using air, helium, or whatever other fluid you care to use. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.